Uh, some major words in our in our gospels and our readings this morning, weren't they? Our Old Testament and our Psalm tells us that if we stay with the Lord, we'll we'll be like a tree planted along a along a river, we'll bear good fruit. And Jesus goes into it a little deeper and says, you know, be careful on who you are. Because there will be joys and woes in the end. But this morning I want to uh, look more at our at our first Corinthians reading. And I titled my sermon to rejoice. We will live. You know what? We will live forever. This pastor man used to say. As Christians, we know that, right? But there is an if. Now that's the word that really changes things. That two-letter word if. You see, there's always an if in life how life works. See, it stems from the simple knowledge that if you do this, you will see that. If you do this, that will happen. If. No, as I was getting ready to write, the Lord brought my heart that a guy by the name of Sir Isaac Newton, you ever heard of him? He wrote all kinds of scientific stuff, didn't he? He said, for every action, there's a reaction. And that's actually Newton's third law of, of motion, kind of simplified. And the part that I get a kick out of is that people call Newton a genius for writing down the obvious. <laughs> if I do this, that'll happen. Well, no kidding, we can see that. But then again, I wonder why Jesus wasn't considered a genius for his words. His words of life after death. Let's call it Jesus' law of resurrection. Jesus said if we follow him and believe in him, he will give us eternal life, right? The action, if we follow him, the reaction, we will have eternal life. See how you got to have it all set up before humans decided they know exactly what's going on. <coughs> God had this all planned before we started taking possession of it and saying, this is what it is. Well, come on. God had that all written up right. And that's part of our reading in 1 Corinthians. See, Paul is talking to a group of, of religious traditionalists, if you will. They had earthly knowledge. They had earthly wisdom. And they wanted to hold on to their own ideas. See, they argued that there was no resurrection because it wasn't talked about in the Old Testament. They argued that there's no resurrection in the Old Testament. How can you say that now? But they failed to understand the truth of the resurrection of the Messiah. They missed the prophecies <coughs> and the teachings that were right in front of them. You go back to the Old Testament, Job 19, 25 to 27. I know that my Redeemer lives, and that in the end he will stand on the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes. I and not another. How my heart yearns within me. Or in Deuteronomy. God says, see now that I myself am he. There is no God beside me. I put to death and I bring to life. I have, I have wounded and I will heal. And no one can do the run of my hand. Or Isaiah. I always love Isaiah's prophecies. Isaiah 26, 19. But your dead will live, Lord. Their bodies will rise. Let those who dwell in the dust wake up and shout for joy. Your dew is like the dew of the morning. The earth will give birth to her dead. Life after death is prophesied in the Old Testament over and over. But these men of Corinth have decided that their 
that their religious hearts were more important than anything else. What they had decided, their unwillingness to understand the new way. And when you look at it, they were destroying who Jesus was. They destroyed for what he did. He destroyed everything what he came for. The truth of the gospel is being corrupted by man's ideas. Gee, does that sound familiar? And we know what goes on today. Churches fighting each other to have their own way. Saying they are right. That we have the way to heaven. Don't trust that other church across town. That we got the right way. And you know what? Now, just like then, there are people in those churches with personal plans. Probably, they probably aren't looking at Paul's teachings. See, they like the power they develop. They like to have control over their club, if you will. And for me, it's hard to watch. For me being a I still consider myself a new pastor. It's very hard to watch pastors teaching things that aren't true. Now, I have to admit, I don't really know of any religions that are teaching other than the resurrection today. After all, if we're going to preach heaven, there has to be a way to get there, right? And we know we don't buy our tickets home ticket, Master. So Jesus Christ is still the standard to get to heaven. But the part that's hard to watch is how people are trying to take Jesus and use him in terrible ways. They're using his words and saying that it says this, and it really doesn't. It's hard to watch as they take Jesus out of charge and put him down here in the mix. And that's what we see in our reading. Paul trying to explain to this group of Corinth that their old Judaism ways are now obsolete. Now Jesus came. They can't deny that. They have to change for the better. When you read that 12 through 19 again, I want to read that again because that's such an important part of our of our of our biblical understanding. But if it's preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless. And so is your faith. More than that, we are then found to be false witnesses about God, for we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. We did not raise him if in fact the dead were not raised. For the dead are not raised, and Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are all people most to be pitied. Hmm. Now imagine if those religious I don't know, I call it religious hardheads because they wouldn't change. Imagine if they got their way. I'd be preaching that there was no resurrection when you died. Think of that. I'd be standing up here telling you, sorry, when you're dead, you're dead. It's over. You missed the boat. There's nothing else you can do. It wouldn't be much fun, would it? As Paul said, if we only hope in Christ while we while we live, we need to be pitied. People ask, what does he mean by that? Well, he's telling us that if Jesus, with Jesus by our side while we live, we're still going to do stupid things. We're never going to be sinless. Think about that. If Jesus is only good for us while we're living, we're in big trouble. We can look at the disciples, the apostles, 
The ones that made it to the next step, they still make mistakes, didn't they? They were with Jesus for three years, one on one. And he couldn't get them straightened out. So, what about the rest of us? That's what Paul's talking about. That we need more than what we can do here because our sinful ways, we can't make it on our own. That's why we have hope in the resurrection of Jesus. See, when he died, he was a sacrifice for all of us. He sacrificed his life for our sin too. See, because God the Father is the one that we have to stand in front of on the judgment day. And if we go on our own, we're in big trouble. But Jesus covered our debt with the Father. Jesus said, I'll take their punishment. Because, well, in his last one, some of his last words, Father, they know not what they do. And that's why the resurrection is so important, because when Jesus died and resurrected, that gave us a chance to have a new way in heaven. It really takes faith and makes it pretty simple, doesn't it? But when I was writing this, I, I had to think to myself, to preach without the resurrection, to preach without Jesus coming back. Of course, I'd have to skip the part in the Bible that Jesus' tomb was empty, right? We'd have to just skip over those words that the guys wrote about the fact that they saw the empty tomb. We had to skip apart the part about the hundreds of people that saw him after the crucifixion. We had to skip the part about the, the meal of the disciples. We had to skip probably one of the worst parts of all that Jesus sent his spirit to us. Because if Jesus would have come back and said, hey, I'm sending my spirit. I'm going away, but I'm sending my spirit. We'd be in real trouble. We'd have to skip the parts that Jesus spoke about life after death. and We'd have to tell Paul he was a complete liar because he didn't see Paul on the, on the road, or see Jesus on the road. Think of how it would take that Bible and just shrink it down to, well, the Old Testament. But then we'd have to go to the Old Testament and tear out those readings that I read earlier that, that we are going to see life after death. Yeah, preaching up here wouldn't be a whole lot of fun if we had to take the words about Jesus being our Savior out of the Bible and he conquered death for our sake. It takes the hope out of faith, don't it? But see, that's the problem. When we take the hope out of faith and make it a law, well, for some people it's fun because they can stand up here and say, you broke the law, you did this wrong, I'm not punishing you. I'm not that type of preacher. I'm the type of preacher who says we have hope in Jesus Christ because we can't, we cannot make the law no matter what we do. And one thing we always have to remember that faith is more than being resurrected in our death. I mean, that's a great part of faith, but when you look at faith, it's truly about living a life of serving God and each other. The way Jesus taught us. The hope and faith is that we all learn to love each other and take care of each other in God's way, in His plan. But that's part of our duty in faith. You know, yeah, we, we love to say, well, there is no, nothing we can do. But as I said before, there is stuff we have to do. We have to do our part. Because Jesus tells us very clearly in John 5, 24, Very true, I tell you, whoever hears my word and believes him, believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged, but has crossed over from death to life. There's that 
action reaction medium. But part of our trouble is we get so mixed up about death and life and the whole act of living in this world. Sometimes we get engrossed in this side of it really hard. I look at it, we, we focus on the drop of water instead of the ocean. We, we get really intense about this side of our life instead of the eternity to come. We forget that the thing that we're here to do is not save ourselves or not to try to be righteous, but it's to have faith in Jesus Christ, to give him control of our lives, to understand what he's saying. No, we get focused on trying to be in control. And our lives are truly out of control. See, we can't change, stop, or alter what will happen the next moment, can we? We think we do. We think if I do this, then I change it. But I truly believe God knows we're going to do that. So he knows what's going to happen. <coughs> the only thing we can change is we can give ourselves a place in heaven for eternity if we humble our heart. <coughs> That's the part of life that we can change. Our own. Is it going to change a lot on this side? Well, it'll change our joy and what we, what we keep important. But boy, it's going to change a whole lot on the other side. That's why I say we can live forever. And that's why I threw in the word if. You know, I was writing this. And I was thinking about those, those, that young teacher that was killed by York, or the family of Pierce, or the thousands who have passed from COVID, or almost 10 years ago when my sister laid down for a nap and didn't want to cut the age 50. Were they ready for eternity? Were they ready for the next step? Or were they focused on this side? Were they stuck in their own, own plans? See, they never expected what happened, did they? It just happened. That's what I mean by understanding the action reaction. I hope they were taught about the law of resurrection. That if they did their part on this side, that they had no problem, no matter what happened. That Jesus said, very true, I tell you, whoever hears my words and believes him, and sent him has eternal life, will not be judged, but has crossed over from death to life. Those that believe will live forever in God's peace. Paul, I honestly don't know if he got through to those people that were so focused on this is the way it is. That they missed on this is the way it is. I don't know. We do that in life a lot. We, we get focused on the wrong things and we miss what's going to happen. Our world is in a place right now that is focused on some really, really, really dumb things. We don't have a Paul out there preaching like they did. Maybe we need that. I don't think I'm the person that could stand up there and do that. Maybe I am. I don't know, but it's God's plan. But we've got to start telling people the real truth of where it all comes from. That we will live forever. If we get things straight on this side, we can't keep doing our own plan and looking at our their blinders and expect to make it. Jesus said he forgives. 
if you believe in public health. Ah, uh, the hope of the gospel, the hope of faith, the hope of Jesus Christ. It's all pretty simple when you look at it. All the religious stuff doesn't mean a thing. When we get up there, God's not going to ask us, what church did you go to? He's going to say, did you believe in me? And that's what's going to be the ending. That's going to be our, that's going to be our, our reaction. Let's, let's believe in the right way. God, tell you what, let's do. Dear Heavenly Father, you set up faith. Our Old Testament goes through and tells the story over and over how people decide to do it their own way and not look to you. The letters of our New Testament, we have Paul telling people, quit trying to do it your own way. Jesus Christ is the way. Heavenly Father, we don't know for sure if those people ever listen. We know by the letters of Paul that there were many that did. But Heavenly Father, we have to look in the mirror and decide where we're at in that picture. And we have to decide what we are believing in. Heavenly Father, you sent your Son, you sent your Spirit. We just ask you to fill us, fill us up and guide us in the right direction. So that when that, that final time comes, when we close our eyes for the last time on this side, that we'll open them on your side and you'll say, huh, I've been expecting you. Help us understand the resurrection. Help us understand it's all Jesus. Us. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just pray this all in Jesus' name.